Hey, Brad Kazmarski back. Today I'm going to talk about the foot and ankle complex. When I go through the anatomy class that I teach, the first thing we start is with the foot and then work our way up part by part and then we put it all back together as a whole. So we teach it section by section to make it a little bit more functional um, within the way we have to teach basic anatomy, but we really don't get functional until we teach it through the FMS and other movements as a unified regional independent system. So regional interdependency is kind of the key term on that. But when we teach the foot, we're going to look at two global positions first. So the foot and ankle. If we could just have 100 people out there, if we had a whole soccer team, a whole sports team, basketball team, football team, we took the shoes off, and I'm talking to them, can they sit in two positions? So taken from Philip Beach's work and presented to us through Ann Harmon, Ann Hartman, sorry, Ann Hartman, we're going to sit, can we sit in this position? So can we sit with our toes, plan, our feet plantar flexed, our ankles plantar flexed, and can we comfortably sit with our heels on our butt? So if I'm sitting and talking to a group and I want to just appraise, quickly bucket everyone's ankle issues, do they have them or not? Yes or no? So I'm going to have them sit in this position for about five minutes while I talk to them. They stay up to 20 minutes, but in five minutes, can they comfortably sit? I'm not going to ask them to tell them it's an appraisal. I'm going to look and have them see if they squirm around or move or can't take being in this position. If they can take being in this plantar flex sitting position, and then can we take and be in this toe sit? I cannot do this toe sit. So can they sit with their foot fully dorsiflexed and then their butt on their heels comfortably? If they can sit in these two positions for an extended period of time while I talk through them, then they're just going to be cleared from an ankle mobility perspective in a general group big team setting, not FMS screen. So if they can do that, they're fine with that. If they can't do that, that's where we start to dig a little bit deeper. So now we're going to look at dorsiflexion. So in this position, can they dorsiflex the foot, foot off the ground, 20 degrees? So if they're starting at 90, can they pull back 20 degrees? And then can they plantar flex 50 degrees? So if they cannot do both of the two sitting positions and the global sitting positions from Philip Beach's work, then we're going to look at the ankle. Can we, are we limited in a 20 degree dorsiflexion or 50 degree plantar flexion? And in the dorsiflexion can then with the foot on the ground, so now adding some of the developmental sequence work with gravity with reflexive core, can the foot be on the ground and dorsiflex 35 degrees? So if the foot can dorsiflex 35 degrees, the foot on the ground, that's going to tell us they're probably okay in that position. And then can the big toe, we'll go here, can the big toe Go back into extension 70 to 90 degrees. So we should be able to actively get about 70 and passively get almost 90 degrees of extension. And if you think about that position, if we can't have that, we're going to be struggling here in this sitting tall sit position or toe sit position, sorry. And then in push off, so if we're in a sprint mechanic, deep angle, basketball cut, football, any of those positions, baseball, steel, soccer, if we can't get full big toe extension, then we're going to be lacking um, a lot of the up, everything from above that has to be compromised. So either we're going to be less efficient, less powerful, or we're going to put ourselves in a position to get more injured. And then opposite of extension is we should be able to get 45 degrees of big toe flexion. So globally speaking, can we sit in those two positions while I just talk to a team? If we're going to take out there and we're going to have a whole group first day can we sit in those two positions while I talk? Do they have to squirm around or can they handle it without their shoes? If they can sit in those two positions easily without their shoes, we're good to go. If we can't, then we're going to look more specifically. Let's break out ankle dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. And then compare, can they get 20 degrees dorsiflexion, 50 degrees plantar flexion on both? Or is there a difference? A little bit of inversion, eversion as well. And then in this position, can they get 35? If they're limited here, Let's break out that big toe. Is that big toe a limiting factor? 70 degrees active, 90 up to 90 degrees passive. Can we get up to 90 degrees passive extension and 45 flexion? So if we can't, that's what we need to start working on. If we're limited in that big toe extension and flexion, that's going to limit, as you can see, our dorsiflexion, and it's going to limit our seated position in our tall, in our toe sit, and it's going to limit our acceleration mechanics for being able to take off and get low in angles. And then last than the ankle, if we are limited in that dorsiflexion and it's more of a stretch in the back, that's where our strength conditioning comes in. We can work on 
our um, soft tissue, anything from we can have an acupuncturist work on it. We can specifically get in there with with you know yoga tune-up balls. We can get on the foam roller, roll stick. We can get in and do soft tissue work on the backside. If it's pinching in the dorsiflexion position, that's more of a joint restriction at the joint capsule, and that's when we know we refer out to our athletic trainer, to our physical therapist, etc. So. Right off the bat, we can look at our whole ankle complex and say, can they get in those two positions? If yes and easily, we don't need to go any farther. We're good with the ankle. If we bucket everyone who has trouble with those positions, then we can look deeper. We can look at ankle, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. Then we can look at big toe, range of motion. And then we can look at if those are limited, that's where we start. Once we can get those back up to par and go back into the seating positions, we're good to go. So it's important that we know when we look at the ankle and foot complex, what to look at, how quickly to appraise it, and when we need to just let it go. If they're good, they're good. We don't need to beat a dead horse. Let's move on to something else. But if that's a limitation, let's find if it's the ankle, if it's a pinch or if it's a stretch or if it's the big toe, if it's lacking a little bit. And that's where we can spend our specific time rolling the bottom of the foot, getting someone specific to mobilize some of that big toe. And then we'll get back to our four by four training matrix and our developmental sequence and we should be good to go. So that's a quick appraisal of the foot and ankle structure in the foot and ankle complex and how I would do it in a team setting or in a big group, just going from a more global look down to a more specific look. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.